Santa's Boots, story by Dan Kubelka, illustrations by Diane Flagg. One morning, as Santa walked in the snow on his way to feed his reindeer, he felt his big toe becoming cold. Santa stopped, and looking down at his boots, noticed his big toe peeking out of his right boot. Poor Santa, he had a hole in his boot. After Santa fed his reindeer, he went to his closet to find a better pair of boots. He looked and looked, but all the boots he found were worn out. What was he to do? Santa thought and thought. Then he called for Alvin, his chief elf. Santa asked Alvin to have some new boots made for him. During the next few days, Alvin brought Santa many different styles and kinds of boots from many different cobblers. Santa tried them all on, but none of the boots seemed to fit. Some were too big, some were too tight. Not one pair of boots fit Santa just right. Poor Santa. With all the boots, he still did not have a pair that fit him. Santa was so concerned about finding a pair of boots to fit him that he wrote up a proclamation. It read as follows. Whoever shall make Santa a pair of boots that fit him just right shall have a ride in Santa's sleigh on Christmas night. Now, in a little village far from the North Pole, lived a little deaf girl whose name was Deanie. She could read, but she could not hear. Every day Deanie would do her chores around her farm and then go and play with her dolls. One day, after milking the cows and helping her mother make cheese, Deanie went out to play with her dolls under her favorite tree. While Deanie was sitting and playing with her dolls, the chief elf named Alvin came by and tacked up Santa's proclamation on a tree. Deanie stood up and read it. With a twinkle in his eyes, the little elf said, Why don't you make a pair of boots for Santa? Though Deanie could read his lips, she just sighed and shyly shook her head. How could I possibly make some boots for Santa, she thought. As Deanie thought more about it, she began to remember how her grandfather had made boots and shoes long ago. She wondered if there was still some leather around the farm. After all, she thought, I did make some shoes for my doll once. Deanie became excited and ran home to her mother. She asked her mother if she knew where any leather was. Deanie's mother told her that she might find some in the barn. Deanie ran out into the barn and, after looking and looking, finally found two nice-looking pieces of leather. The leather looked perfect for Santa's boots. Deanie took the leather and began to make Santa's boots. Then, she remembered, she did not know what size to make Santa's boots. Deanie felt upset, so she went out to her favorite tree to think about it. Suddenly, someone touched her on the shoulder and she jumped. As she turned around, she noticed that it was Alvin the elf. Why are you so upset? Alvin asked. Because I want to make Santa a pair of boots, but I don't know what size he wears. Deanie sighed to Alvin. Quick as a wink, the little elf reached into his pocket and pulled out a sock. Here is one of Santa's socks. You can use it as a pattern to make the right sized boots. Deanie was excited again. She thanked Alvin and ran home. Quickly, Deanie began making Santa's boots. She worked and worked with the leather until finally she had crafted two fine boots. They were nice boots, she thought, but they were not black. Deanie did not have any black shoe polish and wondered how she was going to make Santa's boots black. She thought and thought. Then, as she sat by the fireplace and noticed the black soot on the fire kettle, she remembered how her grandfather had made black polish. Deanie made herself some black polish just like her grandfather had done. Carefully, she rubbed it on the boots. The more she rubbed, the blacker and shinier the boots became. Finally, the boots were so black and shiny that Deanie could see her face in them. Then, as she sat by the fireplace and noticed the black soot on the fire kettle, she remembered how her grandfather had made black polish. Deanie made herself some black polish just like her grandfather had done. Carefully, she rubbed it on the boots. The more she rubbed, the blacker and shinier the boots became. Finally, the boots were so black and shiny that Deanie could see her face in them. When Deanie had finished making Santa's boots, she brought them to the dinner table and showed them to her family. They all thought the boots were well made, but wondered how she knew what size boots Santa wore. One said, How do you know they will fit Santa? Did one of your little elf friends tell you? Deanie gestured, Yes, excitedly, and they all laughed at her. Another said, how are you going to get them to Santa? Fly on a cloud? Even though they all laughed at her, Deanie was determined to get the boots to Santa and said, I'll take them to Santa myself. 
After dinner, Deanie took Santa's boots to her room. Since it had been snowing outside, Deanie put on the warmest clothing she had. Extra food from the dinner table and Santa's boots were carefully wrapped up and put in her backpack. Deanie knew it would be getting dark soon, so she hurriedly put on her backpack, grabbed her lantern and snowshoes, and set out on her way. The farther Deanie walked, the harder the snow fell, and the more difficult it became to see and walk. Deanie soon became tired, but she knew she had to keep going because Santa needed his boots. Suddenly, as Deanie stepped, the snow sank and she fell into a deep pit used by a trapper for catching large animals. Poor Deanie! She tried and tried to get out of the pit, but she could not. What was she to do? As Deanie was trying to think of a way out of the pit, a sudden flash of light blinded her. She shielded the light from her eyes with her hand and noticed it was Alvin the elf standing next to her. Have no fear, Alvin exclaimed. I have come to help you. The tiny elf grabbed Deanie's hand and said, Come, let's go ride on a cloud. Deanie blinked her eyes and before she knew what was happening, she was riding on a cloud. Deanie noticed that she was not cold anymore and that the cloud seemed to be moving faster than the wind. Before Deanie hardly knew it, the cloud was landing at the North Pole. It was just as she had pictured it. Giant candy canes outside, quaint-looking buildings covered with snow, and lights flickering. Alvin took Deanie to the building named Santa's Workshop. As Deanie went inside, she could see thousands of toys being made by elves, faster than she could count. Alvin led Deanie to a big carved door marked Santa's office and asked her for the boots. As Alvin entered Santa's office, he said, Santa, here's one more pair of boots I would like you to try on. Oh, but I'm so tired of trying on boots, and I have not found one pair of boots that fit me yet, Santa replied. Try these boots on, Santa. I think they will be the last boots you will have to try, responded Alvin. Santa then wearily took the boots from Alvin and tried them on. Oh, how they sparkled on Santa's feet, and they seemed to fit him just right, too. With a twinkle in his eyes, Santa shouted, They fit! They fit perfectly! Who made these boots? I want to see them immediately. Quickly, Alvin opened the door and led Deanie into the room. You must be Deanie, Santa said, looking at her and signing her name. Deanie was surprised that Santa knew her name sign. Santa noticed her surprised look and said, I know all the good little girls and boys, and you, my dear, will ride with me in my sleigh tonight for making me such a handsome pair of boots. Deanie was so proud and happy that her heart almost got caught in her throat. And so, it was on Christmas Eve night, after Santa's giant sleigh was all packed with gifts, that Deanie climbed aboard and helped Santa deliver presents to all the good girls and boys. When Deanie finally fell asleep, Santa took her home, put her in bed, and covered her with one of his warm fur blankets. Santa filled all the stockings, left presents under the tree, and put one pair of worn-out boots at the end of Deanie's bed. Never in all of Deanie's dreams had she ever had such a wonderful Christmas. That end.